we have to attend to another very important and very exciting part of today's convocation, the awarding of the honorary degree and the delivery of the convocation address. Madam Chancellor, it is my pleasure and privilege to introduce our honorary doctoral recipient, Helen Branswell. Ms. Branswell is a senior writer, writer at STAT, a news outlet focused on health and medicine, where she covers infectious diseases and global health. Ms. Branswell began her career at the Daily Gleaner newspaper in Fredericton, New Brunswick, before joining the Canadian press in 1986. She was the CP's medical reporter from 2000 to 2015. Her journalistic excellence has been recognized with many honors, including the George Pollock Award for Public Service, the Victor Cohn Prize for Excellence in Medical Science Reporting, and along with her colleague, Ms. Branswell was the 2020 uh, Pulitzer finalist for breaking news and co for coverage of the COVID pandemic. Madam Chancellor, in recognition of her outstanding career in health science, infectious disease, and global health journalism, exemplified by her stellar coverage of the COVID-19 pandemic, I request that you confer the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa upon Helen Branswell. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors and upon the recommendation of the University Senate, I confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, Mr. President, graduates, and honored guests. I am deeply humbled to receive this honor and would like to thank Carleton for recognizing my work in this way. But today is not about me. This is your day, and I would like to extend my heartfelt congratulations to all you soon-to-be graduates, the members of the class of 2022 gathered here today. You've worked hard to make this day a reality, and you deserve this opportunity to revel in your accomplishments. The COVID-19 pandemic will have made the last two years incredibly challenging, and it will have changed your university experiences in unexpected and unwelcome ways. But you have persevered to your great credit. I've been reporting on COVID-19 since the beginning of January 2020, and I've spent most of that time seated in a desk, at a desk in my apartment in Boston. For the first 20 months of the pandemic, I couldn't come back to Canada to visit with family or friends. It was a very isolating time. I'm sure many of you also experienced isolation and separation during the past couple of years as well. And some of you will have experienced loss. To you, I extend my sympathies. In that context, it is really lovely to see you all here together, surrounded by your family and friends. Zoom and other online tools that we've used to stay connected during the pandemic have been a lifeline. But celebrating together makes this a much more joyous event, does it not? After today, some of you may continue your studies in an academic setting, but for a number of you, and maybe even many of you, this marks the end of your academic endeavors, at least for now. It doesn't, though, mark the end of your education. The tools you've acquired and honed here at Carleton, learning how to analyze and synthesize information, to meet deadlines and juggle multiple assignments, these will now help you as you navigate in a different arena. You're going to be looking for and finding jobs, joining workplaces where you'll need to learn an organization's language and culture, as well as how to work within it. 
you will learn how to perform a particular job and move from it to others as you climb corporate ladders or make course corrections in your careers. You'll have to learn how to work under bad bosses. In every career, unfortunately, there are a few bad bosses. I hope you encounter very few of them and that your time under them is short. Keep in mind when this happens that there are great bosses ahead of you. And when you become a boss, make sure you're the good kind, not the bad kind. You will need to learn how to find the right balance between work and all the other parts of your world, your relationships, your family, your mental and physical health. This balancing of work and life outside of work is one of the most crucial skills you'll need to acquire in the next phase of your journey. And it's a difficult one to achieve. With constant connectivity, there's so much pressure to erase the lines between work time and your time. Protect your personal time, your family time, the time you devote to the non-work endeavors that feed your soul and replenish your energy. But I would also urge you to work hard, because hard work leads to good work and work that is rewarding. I'm talking here about uh, psychological rewards, not financial ones, but those come from hard work too. We spend a lot of our lives working, and I would urge you to find work that fulfills you. That can be easier said than done at the beginning of a working career, when your resume is short and your expertise is still being developed. But lean into the areas that interest you and explore them with gusto. Bring curiosity to your work. Keep an open mind, be a good colleague, be an eager mentee, and when it's your turn, a supportive mentor. Give back. I know that you're not all journalism and communication students, but I beg the indulgence of those of you who are not, because I would like to address my people for a few minutes. Journalism has been going through a rocky period of late. Jobs can be hard to find, and especially at the entry level, salaries aren't great. That aside, it is just the best job around. If I counted the days I was bored at work on my fingers and toes, I would have digits to spare. I wish you good fortune as you try to find entry into our field. And I beseech you to comport yourself with integrity. We live in a highly polarized world right now, made more so by news outlets that profit off of fomenting anger and dissent. This type of journalism is eroding the foundations of democracy and rending the fabric of our communities. It is more theater than journalism. Don't use your skills that way. As you embark on your careers, understand that you will make mistakes. We all do. Every journalist I respect hates making errors. The trick is not to get defensive when you do. Acknowledge the mistake, fix it as fast as you can, and thank the person who pointed it out to you, even if their tone was snarky when they did so. The reality is they have done you a favor. Some of you probably have plans in place, jobs or at least internships that are awaiting you, and a roadmap for your immediate future. I wish you well in those endeavors. But I suspect some of you are feeling today the way I did, decades ago, when I got my single degree, a Bachelor of Arts in English Literature. Truth be told, I don't remember much from my graduation day. I don't remember who gave the convocation address, and I don't remember the pearls of wisdom he presented to me and my friends. It was 1978, so I'm pretty sure it was a he, though. What I do remember from that time is a swirl of emotions. Sadness, because I knew that my friends and I would not be together as much going forward. There was also a sense of readiness. I was ready to be finished with school. But there was also anxiety, because I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. I struggled for a bit. 
but I eventually stumbled into journalism by complete serendipity, and I consider myself profoundly fortunate to have done so. It has been for me a highly fulfilling and rewarding career. The period of transition you're embarking on may be challenging, but you will find a way, your way. I hope for you that you get as much from that journey as I have gotten from mine. Congratulations, class of 2022. Go forth and prosper.